Hi there, it's me Nico. Today I want to take you with me to look at the popular books in Chinese reading community in 2020. Depending on their genre and their author, you may or may not have heard about these books. I'll briefly go through a list and mainly talk about the books that we have heard of on booktube or at least I have heard of on booktube. The data is from my favorite website of all time, douban.com. I have made one of these videos back in 2018, I'll link it down below and also I'll link another detailed post about this video uh, with more books on the list on my website so you can check it out if you are interested. This video was supposed to go out at Chinese New Year as a celebration but clearly it's late but I still wish you a happy and healthy new year. So without further ado, let's get started. The first list on the report is the most viewed books of 2020. There are four books from China on the list and six books from France, Italy, South Korea, Israel, Australia and Poland. The Italian book is quite popular on booktube. It's called Friend Maria, A Writer's Journey by Elena Franti. She's an author from the Napolitan novels. This is a memoir, collection of letters and interviews where the author talks about writing, femininity, family and history. And it also has a lot of the deleted paragraph for her other books as well. Another book I'm interested in on this list is Fly Already by Israeli author Edgar Carrot. He is also a screenwriter for films and television, and this is a short story collection of his where the stories happen in peculiar situations and places you can never guess the ending. The next list is the top rated books of 2020. This is a mixture of different genres. They're not necessarily all the books that published in 2020, they're just books that got the top rating during the year, and this is the list that I want to talk about the most. An art book called The Art of Mondale comes at the first place. This is a book from the title you can tell. It's a collection of art by the company Mondale. And this is a book that I think is better for us to visually enjoy than talking about it. The Coming of the Third Reich by Richard Evans comes in at the second place. This is a historical nonfiction studied Germany before the Second World War, talking about the rise of power of Hitler and the Nazis which is unfortunately still a relatable topic of today. Following on the third place is Know My Name by Schnell Miller. I just finished reading this book this month and it well deserves its place on the list. Schnell Miller is an artist and writer based in San Francisco. She's also the victim of the Stanford sexual assault case, but for the longest time she is known by Emily Doe on the media. This is a book that reclaimed her identity and really the trauma and aftermath. It shows you how much courage it took for you to fight for yourself in the current justice system even when you have the physical evidence and even witness. It is a book that I highly recommend everybody to read and I'll have a detailed review coming up later. Patriarchy and the Capitalism by Japanese scholar Chizuko Ueno hints at the first place on this list. It's a nonfiction about how women in Japan has been exploited in the format of unpaid work by the patriarchy system and the traditional values. Although it's a book mainly talk about Japan, but I think it's relatable in a lot of countries, for example, in China and even in the US. A manga series called Yuzumaki by Japanese artist Junji Ito is on the fifth place of the list. So you can tell when I said this is a list of a mixture of genres, I wasn't joking. This is a manga series talk about a group of people who lived in a plague city, their disordered life and some of the cursed events that's happening. This manga has been adapted into different TV shows, movies and even video games. The aforementioned book Friend Malia, A Writer's Journey coming at the sixth place on this list followed by a art book called A Wild Child's Guide to Endangered Animals by Meli Murada. Coming at the 8th place is the only Chinese book on the top rated books of 2020 list. It is an essay collection called Mu Guang Eyesight by Dr. Tao Yong. Dr. Tao Yong is a victim of a hate crime towards doctors in the beginning of 2020. On January the 20th, 2020, a criminal ran into Dr. Tao's hospital with a knife, hurt Dr. Tao, but most importantly, hurt his left hand. This book was written after the crime where Dr. Tao found out that he could not perform surgery to his patients anymore in the rest of his life due to the injury of his left hand. It's about his thoughts on life and kindness and why he chose to be a doctor. 
I've watched some interviews of Dr. Tao, and every time I got moved by his kindness, by his understanding of the situation, and by his practicing of helping the people who needs help, even though sometimes his patient does not have the ability to cover the medical bill, but he practicing eye surgery because that he wants to give people more bright in their life, which is an incredible human being. And now he has to give up performing surgeries to the patients, but then he didn't stop being a doctor. He just shifted his focus more onto the studies of his field. After that is Marco Valdo by Italian author Italo Calveno. This is a novel talking from the perspective of an unskilled worker who works in an industrial town in North Italy. I've heard so many things about Italo Calveno's writing, and I believe one of the events that I'm participating in, Invisible Cities, the title is from one of his books, although I have never confirmed it with the hosts. But I heard his book emphasized on the relationship between humans and the cities, how humans are coping with the ever-changing modern lifestyles. Although I have never read one of his books, but he's always on the top list that I want to read. The last book on the list is called The Ring of Satan, written by a German writer, W.G. Seabot. This is a novel about one man's reflection when he was on a walking tour on the east coast of England. Topics cover aspects of nature, art, history, and many more. The next list is the top 10 Chinese fiction of 2020. I don't think any of the books have translated into English or other languages yet, so I'll just talk about the two books I've picked up for the Invisible City project for February. The first book I picked up is called Qiu Yuan by Yang Benfen. This is a novel about the narrator listening to her grandmother talking about her grandmother's mother's life, who is called Qiu Yuan, hence the title. Using the author's word, this is a book of the life of an ordinary Chinese woman and how she was struggling to live in the difficult times like a floating piece of wood on the water, and the whole book is like a drop of water running into the river of history. The second book, which is a book that I'm currently reading, is called Nan Huo Dian, The General Store by Zhang Ji. This is a historical fiction talking about the protagonist working at a general store in the southern part of China and when he observes people's different philosophy of living when he was selling the things and he was able to connect the goods that he's selling with the era that he's in. Following the top fiction books list, of course, we have the top 10 Chinese nonfiction books of 2020. Again, I don't think any of the books have translation of any kind yet, so I'll just talk about the one book I have my eyes on for the Invisible Cities. It is called Her or Them by famous scholar and writer Yan Lianke. This is Yan Lianke's attempt of writing his understanding of feminism by portraying that the women's life around him. I'm both looking forward or afraid to dive into this book because I'm very curious about how he's going to say about feminism and the women's life, but also I'm afraid that it's going to full of men's planning. <laughs> so I guess there's only one way to find out. Next, we got the top 10 translated fiction of 2020, meaning that they are translated from other languages into Chinese. On this list, we have two books from Japan, two books from Italy, and one book from each of the following countries. South Korea, Israel, Ireland, Spain, Poland, and Canada. Coming at the first place is Burning Papers by Lee Chang Dong. Lee Chang Dong is a South Korea film director and writer. This is his short story collection talking about the traumas after the Korean War and a lot of social events, and also the society changes after the industrial development of South Korea. Marco Valdo by Italo Calveno showed up on this list too at the second place. One of my favorite books of 2019, Normal People by Sally Rooney, was translated into Chinese last year and made it to number 5 on the list. This is a coming of age story talking about two teenage friends from their high school years until after their college. I remember when I read it, I feel like my heart had been sliced into pieces and grilled on the stove and baked for hours and hours. So I'll link my review of it down below. Ties by Italian author Domenico Starno was the number 6 on this list. This book was quite noticeable back in the years on booktube, and it's a story about family love and the consequence of people's choices. 
Testaments by Margaret Atwood comes at number 10 on this list. Needless to say, this is a popular book. It is a sequel of The Handmaid's Tale. I have tried my best to avoid any of the spoilers for this book, so that's all I know. The last list I want to introduce here is the top 10 translated nonfiction of 2020. On this list, we have four books from America, two from France, one book from Poland, Italy, Sweden, and the UK. Returning to Rounds by French scholar Didier Arabon is the first place on this list. Didier Arabon is the author of the biography Michel Foucault. This book is a reflection and exploration of the author's family after his father died. It's also a discussion about the class system, educational system, the current power shifting, and the voting patterns of France. But by current here, the book was published in 2009, so just keep in mind if you're interested in reading it. A book that appeared for the third time in this video, Friend Malia, A Writer's Journey, is the second place on this list. Some other books I found is very interesting on this list, including the fourth book, Things My Son Needs to Know About the World by Frederick Bachman. Frederick Bachman is one of the earliest writers that I've had read when I first joined Booktube. I loved his delightful writing style and his portraits of small people in his books. But the reason why I found it very interesting for this book to be on this list is it literally translated into Chinese as Don't Argue With Your Mom, a title. So when I first saw the title, I got so confused because I know every book that Frederick Bookman wrote and there's no such a book. After I found out what book it is, I got more confused because it just had a totally different title from the English translated one or even the Sweden one. But the funny thing is, if you connect the two titles together, things my son needs to know about the world, don't argue with your mom. It's very hilarious. The fifth book on this list is called Reading Romance, Patriarchy, Women, and Popular Literature by Janice Radway. This is a book first published in 1984, talking about why romance literature captivates so many female readers and defending romance literature against the idea that they enforce the dependency of women to men. And of course, from 1984 to nowadays, romance literature has grown to be an even bigger genre and have more wide of a reader audience, but some of the myths around the genre still exist. So I think it's still a very relatable title to be dived in. The last book I want to introduce on this list is The View from the Cheap Seas, the nonfiction selection by Neil Gaiman. I don't need to introduce Neil Gaiman. I just feel it's very interesting for me to see how the different of time when people are reading it and the different personality of languages can affect people's ideas on different, on the same books. That concludes of our video of today. There's still many lists of different genres on that report, but if we're gonna talk about all of them, we'll be here for a year. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and see how people are reading the different or the same books in different languages. It fascinates me to see how many different genres and books from different languages are on the overall list. So it reminds me, when I was mainly reading in Chinese, I was actually reading more of translated books compared to now when I'm mainly reading in English. At first, I thought it's because a lot of the books that I read was translated from English, but then I discovered it was not. I was reading more books translated from more different languages when I was reading in Chinese. So that's why I feel like the events like the Invisible City projects is very valuable for us to participate in. And I forgot how many times I have mentioned this event in this video. I'll link all the information down below. Just go check it out if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comment down below which of the books have caught your eyes. And also check out the detailed post on my website. I hope you're happy reading, stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye.